and ended up in Memphis and fell in to a really cool gig. I was in the house band at BB King's Club on a Saturday. I did that and uh, I got to play with a lot of great people. Some friends of mine were in the house band. They were called the Famous Unknowns. They were from Arkansas. So this is Colin John and you know we're here at the Mustard Seed in Highland Square and you know the Paris of Summit County and we're here at the Cornerstone, the, the mighty Mustard Seed Cafe. And Colin you have experience here, when did you start playing in Highland Square? This video is brought to you by VictoryPose.com. It's premium body care and a sustainable package. Confidence is when you believe in yourself, you trust yourself, and you have control over yourself. And that's what Victory Pose does. It makes people feel confident enough to be victorious every day. Our core product is deodorant. And with our luxury goat's milk soap, there's no more need for body wash. No more bottles of plastic into the ocean. And with our hair clay, better than gel, mousse, and hairspray. Victory Pose is for people who care care about what they put on their body and into the environment. With locally sourced ingredients, a brand you can depend on. It's durable. It's premium. When you don't smell right, you don't function right. So you're never going to smell that unpleasantness again from your own body. Established in 2020, we've been around for four years and we've sold thousands of eco-friendly push-up tubes of our deodorant. Our beard oil is incredible and there's always discount codes on the front page of the website and always free shipping. So join the movement, go to victorypose.com and get yourself taken care of. Oh gosh, probably, let me think, in Highland Square would have been right around the millennium. Yeah, I was living in England, but I'm coming back and actually the former owner of Annabelle's is here and that's where I used to play all the time, you know, with a band downstairs and then solo upstairs at Annabelle's, mostly, yeah. What was special about that place? Uh, I mean, that, how did you end up there? Well, you know, it's funny, like, I was primarily a blues player at that time, but, you know, they were known for more their alternative and harder stuff, but they, they accepted me and liked what I did there, so... I was like, cool. And that's what I like about it, because it wasn't just strictly, it wasn't like a metal club or total punk club or, you know, certainly not a blues club. I mean, it was like everything. Anything goes there, you know? Yeah, that's what I liked about it. Me too, me too. The people on the fringes of society, maybe even perhaps, were accepted and, and given, uh, not, not, not judged. Oh, no, it was fantastic, you know. I'm not saying you're on the fringe. I'm. Saying I was on the fringe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's nice where you get like-minded uh, people, and it's kind of like that's transition now up to the Jenks that we were talking about, which kind of has that vibe, you know, sort of like for everyone. And uh, that's nice, you know, whether, you know, no matter who you are, you know, where you come from, you know what I mean? And where did you come from, by the way? I'm uh, from Akron originally, right? I was born here, went to school at Walsh Jesuit, and then I graduated from Ohio University. And then I went to, uh, from there I went to New York, and from there I went to Memphis, then England, and then Hawaii, now I'm back in Ohio and Hawaii back and forth. That's my trajectory of the last 40 years.
So what, what was your uh, collegiate uh, academic uh, thing that you were pursuing? Uh, I actually have two degrees, one in art history and one in communication, which I'm doing neither officially with other than playing music and talking with people. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've played music, though, my entire life, professionally, so I feel fortunate for that. I've always liked to travel, and I've always thought, well, that's one of the benefits if you're a musician, you can travel and do that, you know? Uh, so that's to me, that's a real bonus, just to bring happiness to people everywhere, you know? That's why I do it, really. So being from Akron, were you and your family involved in like the rubber industry or what was... My mother was a, uh, my mother worked in Cleveland as an interior decorator and my dad designed uh, Believe it or not, mausoleums, right? He was an architect, uh, but he concentrated on cemeteries. So n neither of them were in the rubber industry. They just ended up, they had met in Boston and then ended up in, uh, in Akron, Ohio. Just for that. Oh, okay. Well, there's some nice mausoleums in Akron, honestly. I mean, and you got to think about all those rubber barons. I mean, they need mausoleums. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny, yeah. Uh. You do a lot of blues. When did you get into music? Well, really, I started in, like, you know, fifth grade playing the trumpet, you know, in the school band. And then from there, I ended up playing the electric bass. And then from there, switching to electric guitar because I really liked the blues. And most of my peers my age were listening to rock and roll and everything, like Led Zeppelin and Van Halen and stuff like that, Black Sabbath, which I, I still love. But I always loved the blues, you know, so... Being our proximity to Chicago, I have two older sisters and they lived there. So when I was in school, on the weekends I would drive up there to Chicago a lot. And, and I really got the blues bug then, you know. Yeah, and you moved to Memphis. What year was that? What was that like? I, w I had, uh, after I graduated from school, I was. I, I went to New York for a year and a half and then... Now, did you live a hard life now? Was there a lot of drugs going on? Because on Beale Street, when you were a young man, now I know when I was a young man, there wasn't a, there wasn't a, you know, a drug I didn't try. So the same way, I, I was like, I wouldn't say I was out of control. I was just like, you know, we're talking about, you know, the late '80s and early '90s. So that was. Was it rough down in Memphis, down in the Beale Street at BB King's, dude? That was your gig, bro. But I got to hang out. I got to hang out with all the musicians. You know, they were my friends. We. Spent what about that? Was like Elvis wasn't that far removed. No, no, no. I mean, yeah. Memphis is a, it's actually, so it's really not much bigger than Akron, you know? I mean, it's a small place, but it's got a big name because of the music, you know? Which Akron does as well. But, you know, Elvis was influenced by Little Junior Parker and Howlin' Wolf and all those guys from that area in the south, in Mississippi and Arkansas, and, yeah, and, uh, you know, Sun Records with Sam Phillips and all that, you know? So... 
Yeah, Elvis is big down there, but so is, you know, our, our, our favorite, I know Deb and mine would be like Howlin' Wolf, you know, that, that, that's our guy, that's our go-to guy, who we love. So. But, you know, you're listening to Colin John and Long Tall Deb, and he's here with Adam Mercer tonight and, and Phil Maneri. You know, we got to share music. We have to have this face-to-face -face engagement with our fellow humans rather than just like this all the time. The irony is we're doing this on an iPhone with a great little external mic, but don't forget to talk to your friends face-to-face -face and go out and thank you for being live people supporting live music. Well said, Colin John. Well, uh, thank you so much for talking to us, and thanks, Becky, for uh, being the camera girl today. And and uh, that was a real trip, man. Thank you.